educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, we have an uh, interesting chart that was sent to us by one of our listeners uh, going back, uh, showing historically what happened uh, when we had another one of these really bad debt problems where they increased the ceiling by quite a bit. Of course, it was in 2011 uh, during Obama's years, and that's when we had a uh, national debt, I believe, of around four trillion, and now we're at 31 trillion. Uh, so the national debt, you can see, in that era of July, this is where the top was made, right back in here. That's when uh, the debt ceiling was passed, and you can see the big drop that we had into October of that year, and then a movement uh, back up. So those, you know, all I'm saying is the news will probably be out. And we have a we have an incredibly bullish market today as opposed to a bearish market yesterday. And that tells us that uh, the cycle that we thought was going to happen on yesterday certainly didn't happen. We had a really nice profit uh, in the NASDAQ that turned into a, uh, a small loss. But uh, that's uh, neither here nor there. Even the Russell is, uh, is strong today, reaching back to those levels in the S&P around that uh, 41 uh, 75 that are interesting, but uh, there's really, uh, when you have this much strength early in the morning, it's really amazing to see that the stock market can continue to go higher as we go each day. Now, I want to go over that trade here in the NASDAQ because I've had several people asking me, you know, why it didn't work. Well, the gold worked, the euro worked, the bond worked, <laughs> and, uh, the, and, and uh, the corn, corn haven't got filled on the corn yet. But let me post this chart. Now, remember, we've had a lot of movement here because this is just a short-term chart to where we were high. This was our high yesterday, and the market came all the way down. Uh, it dropped uh, about 50 a little more than 50 handles, taking out this low today at 1475, and then it took off. That's why our stops were right there, and of course we didn't get anything on the long side, but we didn't get hurt too bad on the short side. So when these patterns fail, you just got to stand aside and not even work and not even worry about it. And let's let's look let's look at another one here that we're watching here today. This happens to be a weekly chart. On corn, I feel very strongly about this trade. Now we're going to bring it up. It hasn't been filled yet. It came within two cents of the price that we wanted to buy it at. It's rallied a little bit from that level. Still down on the day, but uh, this is a perfect setup. Uh, and remember, when these setups fail, uh, stand stand aside, get out of dodge because they don't work. That's the main thing that you have to realize when you're watching these things, that this is what you have to worry about. So we have the same thing going on in soybeans, the same thing going on in corn. And if it fails, it fails, and uh, away it goes. So that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. So just remember that. Now, we've got an interesting chart here from the DAX, a very, very colorful chart that shows uh, this DAX, uh, the German DAX, in a, in a beautiful uh, a triangle formation, as you can see here, 
uh, the tops, how symmetrical they are, just absolutely perfect. And then you have the Gartley buy, uh, buy bottom right here. There's your 61% retracement. And I don't know where it's happened since that time, but my guess is it's probably moving to the upside. But look at look at these trend lines, folks. You just, you just need this, a ruler and an edge, a straight edge and just go across and draw the lines. And then if you measure what the ratios are, you're, you're going to have some type of a you know, an advantage, and that's the real thing, you know, that you're looking at. There's drive one, drive two, excuse me, one, three, five pattern, <laughs> one, three, five pattern there, and on the downside, you've got a one, three, five pattern. So that's just on the German DAX, and since we're over there, we don't have to fly back. We'll just take a look at the FTSE. Now, the FTSE is also showing the fact that there's probably some type of a buying thing coming in today. Let's uh, take, a, take a look at it. You'll be able to see where we are. And there's where we are. There's your big move down. Look at the double bottom down here, folks. That's a classical double bottom. You take out the low by just a tiny little bit, and away you go. I, if, it's, if it's a real double bottom, it's going to stop right there. And if it's not, it's going to collapse through there. So that's, that's really the definition of a double bottom. Now, when Andrew Lowe did his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street, he quantified all those numbers. In other words, how far does it have to go below the double bottom before it's not a, a, before it's not a double bottom? And the answer to that, folks, is 1%. And boy, that, that, is, uh, that, that gives you a lot of really good information. So let's uh, remind ourselves that all this is based on the mathematics of the market. And by golly, that's what you should be paying attention to. So that's pretty much it. But this pattern that we had here, uh, you can see how I'm going to get this up here to show you that this was what we were looking at. And uh, I, I assumed it was going to be right, but it is totally wrong. You can see uh, this move right here. We went up to it. We dropped, we dropped over $2,000 three times, folks, and ended up with a loss. And I, I you know... <laughs> Nothing you can do about that because, you know, I'm, we were looking for something like this. And, in fact, it started pretty good. We moved our stop as close as we could possibly get. And we're trading something that's worth $130,000, $160,000. Uh, you know, if you're only risking 400 that's not a bad deal. So that's why we use stops is because it prevents you from getting wiped out. And as long as you can do that, you're going to stay in the game. And that's the best part of doing this is the fact that it keeps you in the game, and that's why. Let's remind ourselves. Now, remember yesterday, one of the reasons why we were looking at the uh, market for uh, the NASDAQ, and we were showing that one, and one or two stocks were running the NASDAQ, and that one stock that was running the NASDAQ yesterday was NVIDIA. But what happened today, all the NVIDIA's buddies came along, and they all went up. And that's why the NASDAQ exploded to the upside. I mean, that's what you're looking for. So those are the things that I'm paying attention to here this morning. And I'll show you one that I thought was going to be an absolute beautiful trade. And by golly, it lasted for about 20 points, and then it uh, was no good. And that was selling the uh, NASDAQ up here at this level of uh, 16,000 with a stop at 16,000. Yeah. Hey, we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to uh, focus on the euro here because it has been dropping considerably. Uh, it does two things on this chart. As you're watching, you can see the big ABCD that is formed. On the downside, we had the 382 rally, and then, of course, it's continued to break down. Uh, we're getting very, very close to some pretty good support here uh, in the euro. The U.S. dollar, it just really, uh, it just really goes, goes. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, I have looked. The Palo Verdes have hit me a little bit today, but uh, it goes a little bit lower, and then we should have support about another 50 pips lower in the uh, euro. So we want to be covering that short here, uh, either today or tomorrow. As you can see, how many days it's been down. So usually 10 days is all you're going to get in a move to the downside. So we haven't issued the order to buy it yet, but it's uh, it's getting very very close, probably sometime today. Now, I've been asked to uh, show, show a chart here of a Facebook, also known as Meta, and we'll get up uh, so you'll be able to see this in just a moment, and uh, we'll see. There's the, All this is doing now, folks, is it's making a rally. Notice the, the move to the downside well, it was quite substantial. Now, we rallied up to the 50% level. Very little pattern in here, folks. This is mainly the first part of this, probably short covering, but we have no A, B, C, D at all in here. That gets just like it was on the way down. So what we're doing now is we're back into this area where that gap occurred if you remember well it doesn't show because this is a shorter term weekly chart there was a gap in here when they had the really bad news now with this artificial intelligence that's going on out there it's brought the stock up to the 50 percent level so that's what we're paying attention to someone just asked me uh if i'm really bullish and the answer to that is no i'm not i'm, a, I'm what, what they called a sold out bear i took the small loss uh, in the NASDAQ, but uh, the Russell position, of course, made a great deal of money because it it was the one that has uh, rallied the least 
of all the things that we're looking at. Now, I've got to switch gears here, folks, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but someone asked me, and they sent me this chart, and they I'll show you what it is, and I'm just going to go through my two cents worth to see uh, what it is. This is from the, uh, the Elliott Wave newsletter that was sent out uh, yesterday, uh, or the yeah, yesterday because I I worked on it last night, and it shows the uh, d this triangle that is there. This is a, a ascending pennant, is what it is. Uh, uh, it's actually it's part, well, that's what they called it. The the person asked me how did I make any sense out of that? He said because you talk about ABCDs all the time, and I don't see any ABCDs or any patterns on this. And I said, well, I said, all they're doing is connecting these lines from highs to lows. But they're not, they're not telling you, you know, what, what they're looking at. I mean, as far as that. So all I did was I went in and I just drew the lines just like I thought I, like I do every day. Nothing any different. You'll get up here. and Oh, dear. What do we got here? Hold on. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, there we go. So here's my version of what they're trying to tell you. There's the lines that I drew on top. First of all, as you can see, the first, that, folks, right there is a perfect A, B, C. There's A, B, C, D, Gartley, and it's right at the 61% retracement. That leads to an A, B, C, D to the upside right up in here, in this area right here. You can also look at it really closely on the lower one, you can see the three drive to a top that is forming. That's the one we were looking at yesterday. Okay, so that's what we were looking at. And, and if you look, and this is the larger ABCD right here. Look, a, I didn't even draw that in because, well, I did it here. There's your A, B, C, D, and it all measures up into this zone. But we went popping through here today with this, all this volatility. And so my guess is, with a high probability, it's either today or tomorrow, you're going to see a pretty big reversal in this market. And it's going to be a, uh, I, I think it will be historic. But again, I could be 100% wrong. Uh, well, let's call 90% because I always put a uh, stop in to protect the uh, the thing, things that we're looking at. But let's move on and uh, talk about the uh, corn market one more time because uh, this is going to be very important in the updated uh, newsletter tonight. Because we got our fill in the, the the soybeans, but we did not get our fill in the December corn. This came within two cents of our actual low. Now it's only rallied eight or nine cents at that since that time, but it's a little frustrating when you think you're going to get filled and all of a sudden it's up four hundred dollars because you're only risking four hundred dollars on the trade. So now you have to wait for the market to come down to you one more time, and that's hard to do because you've got to exercise patience when you do this. Because if you don't, you're going to be sitting there with jello in your hands and trying to put it into a cup. And you want to put jello in the cup before you try to understand what the heck is going on. I use jello because it's shaky all the time and changes form most of the time. So anyway, that's the main thing is when you do this, folks, is you have to have patience when you're trading. Uh, when I worked here in this office, right here was six years with uh, my good friend uh, Mark Douglas. The one thing that he exhibited was the fact that he was very patient when he was re waiting to put on the trade. He never got upset or impatient or anything like that. He was right there on top of it. And that's why you know, you've got to be able to do these things. Some, sometimes you're going to be wrong. Sometimes you're going to be right. But that's neither here nor there. Now, let's go to the gold market. Here's what we were looking at yesterday in the gold market. We're going to do two sec sections to show you where we were because it'll give you an idea of ABCDs. And this showed us yesterday is why we were bearish up here. It's the fact that you had a 61% retracement of the high that was right here and a 78% retracement of the high from here. And here's where we had the beautiful a, the little small ABCD right exactly at the 382. And uh, folks, when you see something, and the reason why it's a 382, you see the double bottom again, does not take it out. 
and that rallies up to the 382. That was at 2030, and that gives us a pro uh, profit objective to the downside. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at that just to see how well it turned out. And here it is. We're going to get it right here. And I still think we're headed lower, but let's just wait and see. Because on this particular chart, you can see the price level we're looking at was 1977.1, and the low today was 1978 missed it by 90 cents now that probably is at the, the bottom but we've only rallied from that level only eleven dollars and one would think with a move like that it would be really really interesting to see if that's going to be the bottom or not so we're still uh, looking at that another reason is if you'll look at this 1.618 level right in here that's it so let's pay attention to that and we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, our guest today is Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. And how are you doing, young man? I am just doing awesome, Larry. 
That's good to hear. Listen, why don't you go ahead and get started on what you're going to be showing us today? I guess the 34 week, eight month primary intermediate cycles, and we still have right translation going. So, what do you think here? Um, we do indeed, Larry. Um, what I thought I would do is start off with uh, with that cycle, of course. Um, the 34 week cycle that I've talked about so much on the air is. Uh, is the dominant cycle. It, it contracts and expands. Most frequently, it's right at 34 weeks. Sometimes it expands by a 1.618 Fibonacci function to 55. Sometimes it contracts by 0.618 Fibonacci to 21 weeks. Uh, but nominally, I call it the 34-week cycle, simply because that's the most frequent when it's plotted on the histogram. Uh, here is a chart going back several years, and I've noted with purple lines each of the occurrences of this cycle. Of course, the October lows from last year uh, coincided with the cycle, but the mid-March lows uh, also coincided, and that happened to be a contracted uh, function, a 0.618 contracted function down to 21 weeks of this same cycle. But um, uh, the indications uh, are certainly strong there that we bottomed and we've turned up, and this is where it starts to get really interesting. Um, uh, first of all, let's look at the Dow and my gosh, the Dow actually peaked, uh, coming off the October bottom from last year in, uh, in mid December. And this trend line that, uh, that began from the November, 2021 lows has been the governing overhead resistance line for the Dow Jones industrials. And by extension, the, the overall market. And we're trading a little bit below that trend line right now. Uh, my analysis suggests we are poised to uh, to break above that very, very shortly. And I'll show you why I think that's about to occur. Uh, this is something that, this is a topic you and I addressed in our previous segment a couple of weeks ago, uh, but it's still instructive even, even through today, I find. This is the pattern from 2001 to 2003. And what I found just by visual inspection is it's remarkably similar to what's going on in the present time frame exactly 20 years later. So that's that chart you see on the screen now is 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at the current pattern. This is just uh, before we came on the air. And as one can see, the highs and lows, particularly the lows, match up very nicely. In fact, not only very nicely, but virtually to the day. So what I've do, done here uh, is I've put the two S&P charts on top of one of each other. And the pattern from 20 years ago is on the top. The current time frame is on the bottom. And then the, pur the purple lines there line up the, the lows. And in some cases, uh, they're virtually to the day. <laughs> uh, 20 years ago, we bottomed on October the 10th. In 2022, we bottomed on October 13th. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a mid-March low uh, of 2003. We had a mid-March low in 2023. And the pattern suggests, as long as this analog remains in effect, um, that we march higher from here. These, these pattern similarities, I find, uh, are always interesting, and they work until they don't. But right <laughs> now, Larry, my gosh, um, <laughs> it seems to be following the dance steps of exactly 20 years ago. And this will work, uh, as I said, until it doesn't work. I think it's gonna work for several months, and then later in the year, um, as more people start recognizing it, it will probably cease to work. But right now, it's working. And yeah. the pattern suggests uh, uh, we should be marching higher. And I think that's what's likely to happen. Do you, uh, we have a question from one of our listeners, and that is, uh, yes. how much higher do you think this could go, Stan, in the S&P 500? Uh, good question, and that's something I have thought a lot about. Um, and in a future segment, uh, we'll, we'll look at some charts that explore that. Okay. Uh, I think it's very possible. Well, let's look at the big five indices, the Dow, industrials, the transports, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the New York Composite. Those five comprise what I call the big five. And, and I look at all five of those to, to, to ascertain either confirmation or divergences. The Dow Industrials 
have uh, retraced uh, almost 60 percent of their January to October decline of last year. All the other benchmark indices have retraced less than 50 percent, the transports being the weakest. But with the with the Dow Industrials having retraced uh, almost 60, uh, as, as a few days ago, it was even 60. Uh, I think it's likely. No, no, that's too strong of a word. Plausible. Plausible. <laughs> let me use that word. <laughs> likely. <laughs> Throttle back, Stan. Uh, plausible. The Dow could go to a new high. Uh, wow. And, maybe the and the other indices do not. And that happens in the next six to seven months. Um, and that would really fit the pattern, the long-term pattern, very nicely. And we'll, we'll show that in a, in a future uh, discussion. Um, and I mean, going back as in hundreds of years, that would fit the pattern nicely. Oftentimes, uh, the Dow is a, the Dow Industrials are the last index to peak out in, uh, in any market cycle. And I think that might, I think it's very plausible. I don't want to say certain and I don't want to say likely, but I could easily see the Dow being a solo performer into new high ground in the next uh, five to six months. Uh, S&P, NAS, New York Comp, Dow Transports, uh, maybe not, but we've got lots of time to, to explore that one. Wow, that's uh, really, uh, really good. In, in the short term here, uh, we've got right translation evident in the trading cycle pattern, and, and you know from our past discussions, I place a mm -hmm. great deal of emphasis on the, the notion of right and left translation to give me indications of whether or not I think this market is likely to head either lower or higher. From January of last year into the October bottom, we had a consistent left translation in all of the trading cycles. But from the October lows through the present time frame, on the S&P chart, we've had consistent right translation, which, indic which is indicative of bull market structure. So that lends credence to my view, the market is likely to head higher. Well, it certainly has that appearance, but the right translation is such an important concept because, boy, it, it really gets uh, really gives you an idea what direction we're looking. I have, uh, we have a question for one of our listeners. Why doesn't Stan yes. have a tie on today? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I am actually visiting family in Florida, oh. and through the technology of, of Skype, that we have, I'm able yeah. to be with you on the air today, but so I'm a little bit more casual today. <laughs> okay, good. Where, where are you? In, yeah, where are you in Florida, Stan? Panama City. Oh, okay, good. All right, let's continue. That, but that, they're very observant here, so they wanted to know why why you were <laughs> well, you were very casual today. So let's well, continue I be on, on my with. Toes. Viewers are they're really watching me closely. Oh, listen, they they Stan, they listen to this over and over again and write it down. We're going to be back with Stan Harley after we pay a few bills. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. back folks with Stan Harley. Stan, how are you doing? You're looking pretty good, so let's continue. Doing just awesome, Larry. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's take it a take a look at a pattern that I find very interesting. Uh, the dominant cycle lows on the uh, da the daily chart have been coming in at intervals of 49 to 50 trading days and their multiples, a 1.618 multiple and a two times multiple. As you can see, going back the last couple of years, the lows have been coming in at 100, around 100 trading days, 99, 79, 80, and 49 to 50 ish. And this latest one, I thought we would, might see a cycle low towards the end of this week. That would fit the pattern nicely, but we may have bottomed here just a few days ago, and in, in, in that case, the cycle may have contracted to a 0.764 function. Uh, the operable function is 49.2. There's some Fibonacci math that goes into that, but that appears to be what's taking place right now. Uh, last month or so, the market has been trading sideways, and my indicators that track price velocity and price range have been coming downhill. When a market trades, when indicators go down, Price can either go down or go sideways. If it goes sideways, that has a profoundly bullish uh, message yes. coming. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Uh, so, so for the bullish case, indicators come down, but price does not go down and go sideways. That means once the indicators turn up, uh, the market is likely to pop up and out of the trading range and rock and roll to the upside. And that's what I'm expecting. And I think a lot of folks are going to be uh, some pleasantly surprised, some not so pleasantly surprised. <laughs> but I think we're going higher. And uh, over the next several months, as I talked about earlier, I think there is a very plausible case for the Dow Jones Industrials to make a marginal new high uh, wow. in, in, in the months that come. What the fundamental catalyst will be, I don't know. Maybe uh, the, uh, the Congress comes to an agreement on the uh, on the budget and the debt issues, and maybe Wall Street rejoices with that one. I, that would be the, the most likely scenario, but certainly as a technical analyst, I'm suggesting that we're poised to pop to the upside here very, very shortly and break out of this trading range. Wow. Now you have a, a little chart here on the Case-Shiller home prices? Yes, uh, last chart, I thought we would uh, showcase today, uh, Larry, is the, uh, the Case-Shiller index. There are several Case-Shiller indices. There is a national index, which is what's on the screen right now. And then there are separately both 20 
regional indices and 10 indices are the largest metropolitan areas around the country. And they all tend to follow the same waveform. Uh, they moved up uh, fairly, fairly concerted into a 2006 peak. Then we had a sharp pullback for about a little over five years into 2012. And then we marched higher once again. And it appears to me that home prices have peaked. Um, I was certainly looking for a peak towards between the middle to the latter part of uh, the year 2022. It looks like we're seeing that now. Mm -hmm. Prices now are starting to pull back. And once we get a sustained break of that red line, which is an 18 month moving average, uh, that will confirm the sell signal. And I think home prices are gonna head lower. Uh, they run up an awful lot, particularly out in your area. Oh my gosh, uh, Arizona yeah. has been the strongest real estate market in the entire USA. Yeah. Um, uh, you could just close your eyes and buy anything in Arizona yeah. and it went up and it went up a lot, as you know. <laughs> yeah, Stan, we actually had two people this week uh, knock on our door, not realtors, uh, people that wanted to buy a house in our, we live, you know, we're not in an expensive area, but that knocked on our door to ask if we wanted to sell our house, you know, so. <laughs> I've well, never that, had that happen before, ever, even when I lived in Westlake Village, which, you know, Stan, that house I bought in Westlake Village for 32000 back in 1965. Do you know what it's selling for now? I bought it, I paid thirty two grand for it, 2,400 square feet, four bedroom, three bath. I can't imagine. $1.9 million, and that's down <laughs> from where it was. Yeah. $1.9 million. <laughs> Best trade ever made, and I let it go. <laughs> well, uh, on on the screen here, the K Shiller Index. There's a without running any indicators, not crunching any numbers, just a simple 18 month moving average. I find this works very very well. Just note where the monthly price bars in blue cross either above or below that 18 month moving average, and you have a very simple but very effective buy sell signal for real estate. Note where the monthly price bars broke above the 18 month moving average. It happened several times back here in the 80s. It happened again in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And it happened again following the 2012 lows. That was your buy signal. Conversely, when price broke below the 18 month moving average, when the blue lines broke below the red lines, that was a sell signal. And we saw that uh, following the 2006 peak that summer. And boy, if you kept buying real estate on the way down, you got crushed uh, into the 2012 lows. And then monthly price bars broke above that 18 month moving average in red. And we've been on a buy signal ever since. And right now we are like right there, poised to break below the 18 month moving average. Uh, let's see if it happens. Uh, if it rebounds off of it, well, then the buy signal is still in effect. On the other hand, if the monthly price bars break below that red 18 month moving average, that will confirm the sell signal and the high that the highs that occurred uh, in the summer of, of last year. Wow, that's, uh, that's truly an amazing one because it's certainly contrary to what some people have thought, that's for sure. <laughs> Wow, that's really good. Listen, I want to thank you for being our guest today. And we're going to have you on again in a couple of weeks. And I hope your travel works okay. And that uh, you're out of the snow now. You don't get any more snow until uh, probably December back there in New Jersey. So you should be okay. Uh, actually, we lucked out this year uh, in central New Jersey. We had no snow at all. Uh, wow. It was, a, since I've lived here, it's, a, or it's been a very, very mild uh, Mild winter. You had more snow in Tucson than we had in Yeah, Andrews. we did. Yeah, we flat out did. We had three or four big snowfalls. And, uh, of course, the mountains behind us, you know, they, they look like Switzerland when it happens. But that melts, you know, two <laughs> days later. So it's it's not too much. We have a, we have a question for one of our uh, listeners. Yes. And that is, uh, what's your feeling on interest rates, uh, whether we're going to be going higher or lower in the bond market? Um, next time I'll bring some charts on uh, to discuss okay. that in, in greater detail. But just as a general statement, I think interest rates are longer term heading higher. There is, for the last 150 years or so, there's been a very clear 40-year cycle in the pattern of interest rates. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the last pivotal turn was in uh, 1981, uh, when interest rates reached a high. Uh, summer of 1940, about 40 years prior, interest rates reached a low. Uh, early 1900, another low. 1861, they were a high. Uh, so fast forward March 2020, uh, that was about 40 years from the 1981 high. They hit a low and they're going up. So I think interest rates are going to head higher, not for just a few years, but for ha- perhaps for a few decades. I mean, the last several runs went 40 years. Yeah. So okay. that's where I see things heading. All right. All right, buddy. Listen. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I want to bring the last chart, uh, which is the NASDAQ, uh, up into the... Uh, viewing section here because you can see here the number that we had there at 14,494 that we hit three days in a row backed off uh, you know 40 handles or so from that level we are now 200 points higher than that folks way above the 16,000 level that means that this thing is going higher how much higher I don't know what we just had stand on the air and it looks like it's going to go considerably higher uh, even the Russell, which we've been bearish for such a long time and it's, hasn't rallied much, but has now moved, uh, start, started to move higher, tells us that maybe the stocks that were lagging are going to be being pulled up by these NASDAQ stocks. So 
This is a considerably important breakout because we took out the 61% retracement of nine months ago, and we took out the 50% retracement of 18 months ago, and we're doing it with great volume and huge volatility to the upside. You know, the Dow Jones up about 500, the NASDAQ up 160, the, and the S&P up about 80. These are not small numbers, folks, so that tells us that this is most probably a real, real breakout to the upside. So uh, if you're going to fade it, make sure you put a, uh, a stop in it, and uh, that'll keep you protected because, you know, you can be wrong a lot of times and use your stops, but uh, you can only be wrong one time and not use a stop, then you're out of business. So that's why it's so very important to remember it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you don't risk. So I hope that uh, gives you some indication that my feeling, because I, I thought that this was going to be a chance for the market to go lower. I was wrong. I've been right on the gold, the euro, the bonds, everything else, but I've been wrong on the stocks. We'll see you all tomorrow, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.